Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have a review of the Master Grey Dual Gundam Assault Shroud Mode. Uh, it's been a while since I posted my last video and it's been a while since I built my last Master Grade. And I decided to make a video about this recent Master Grade I happened to bought. Now this isn't one of those latest Master Grades but uh, this one has a, a bit meaning to me because this is my first Gundam Seed Master Grade. Because Gundam Seed was one of those series I really didn't uh, enjoy that much of watching but I was impressed with the Gundams in it so I decided to buy the one that that gave me the most interest in it. Uh, so here we have, you can see in the background we have the box with the Assault Shroud mode and without the armor. Now the Dual Gundam was the one that gave me the most impression because uh, I guess the overall design was just happened to uh, got into me. And it was one of the most simple looking ones I uh, I seen, so I decided to get this one. Now I realize that now the Blitz, Buster, and Aegis Gundam are all out, and besides the Aegis, they use all the same frame. So for me, when I first tried to decide which kit should I buy, was uh, quite a problem. First I was trying to go with the Blitz Gundam, and then the Buster, and then finally I made the decision to buy this one because he has overall uh, has all the stuff that a master grade needs and uh, in terms of weapons as well so let's get on to the review of the master grade now so let me just move the camera a bit now we can see him uh, without the armor at the moment you can see his of course his his color is kind of plain just gray or gray and blue and a bit orange to it uh, I don't really mind but the color but the overall fact is that I really love how big and bulky this Master Grade is because I recently also bought a Master Grade uh, Gundam Death Size and somehow that was also my first Master, master Grade for the Gundam Wing series it was kind of it felt kind of smaller than most Master Grades so I was kind of in a dilemma and I now realize the Wing Gundams or Wing series kits are mostly small. So we have this guy and I used to have a high grade version of this. So let's see what we got. First of all, before we go to the actual kit itself, I'm going to show you what you actually get. First of all, when you're done finish building this, you get to mo the Master Grade dual Gundam itself and you get a shield I'm gonna go get a review about that later you get also a beam rifle standard beam rifle I guess and you get two beam sabers which uh, the beam handles are on the back of the kit and for the beam sabers you get two pink uh, beam sabers now the reason I usually don't really cut this off because I'm not much of a fan of beam sabers so unless it has a unique color or in or a unique shape to it, so I barely use the uh, beam sabers. And one also one thing that kind of got my interest is, oops, sorry about that, is that you get a bazooka. Now, as you know, in the anime series, the dual Gundam never actually uses this bazooka, but I'm pretty sure some of you might be familiar with it if you played either watched the Gundam Astray series or read read it or if you played the uh, on online PC game called the uh, Gundam Capsule Fighters it's the Gundam Capsule Fighters and if you have the gold astray he, he has this weapon uh, to be honest even the first time I actually got to see this bazooka was in the game and I really loved the design of it and how simple I mean not simple but how powerful it looked so this really got my interest. I'm gonna get into this bazooka later, but yeah. You get this bazooka with the dual Gundam. And besides that, let me just adjust the angle. You get multiple hands. Now, this master, of course, these great, these days, master grades comes in with movable fingers, but the seed, cure, seed kits, they come in with built in hands that has different shapes. You have an open style hand. Uh, you got some fists, 
I'm already using one fist, so there's only one here. And you get a trigger. You get also some trigger fingers. And also they have these pegs in them. So you, and all the weapons also have these uh, holes that you can connect these pegs into. So it's easy to attach weapons. And, and it, also, it also has a sturdy connection. And for the beam savers, you get also a standard just gripping hand as well. So no problem. And and as you can see, the box you have the assault shroud mode. So it's obviously you also get the assault shroud armor, and this is a lot of peaceful armor. To be honest, when I uh, have to choose when buying master grades, one aspect I usually watch or tend to consider is to uh, think or you know figure out how much accessories the master grade actually has well besides the kit and its main weapon what else does the kit have so i usually don't go for the kits that has a lot of you know extra stuff into it but i made this one this one as an exception because i really love the design of this now you got all sorts you got all pieces of armor and they're all detachable as you can see because I'm gonna for me I'm mostly gonna uh, put my dual gun without the assault shroud armor for various reasons well not various but a few reasons I guess so let's get into, on to the review right away uh, let me just adjust the camera again to make it more closer as you can see we have the dual gun in itself now I'm gonna take off the weapons or shield, I guess. For the beam rifle, it's kind of difficult. Oh my fucking god. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Uh, I just had a problem while taking out the fist, and I accidentally broke it. I broke the top part of the beam rifle, so I'm going to glue it and hope it gets fixed. So, I won't be doing the beam rifle review for this one, I'm sorry about that. And first, it's my first time uh, for me of something breaking in the Master Grade, so it's kind of a really shock to me, so bear with me. So yeah, so I guess I'll be doing the bazooka review more, so sorry about that. Now, as I said, we have the shield. I haven't put on any uh, dry transfer decals yet because uh, there weren't that much that got my interest yet, but maybe I will. So we have the shield. I believe this is almost uh, similar or same with the strike Gundams, but only different color. Now one thing they really did great on this is that is these pegs, is that as you when you first saw the video, uh, the dual Gundam had this on its arm without even holding the handle. So that is one really strong connection I have ever seen in a Master Grade. So really good job on that, and a lot of detail into it this as well. That's it for the shield. Now onto the Master Grade itself, I'm gonna leave the this fist off to show you the, how the weapons work. Uh, first, let me get those hands away. We'll start with the bottom. Now, one thing that kinda I found a little bit different from the other Master Grades I built, I only build mostly Universal Century Master Grades, so that's going to be like a Gundam series, just RX-78 Gundam series, like Hakushiki or the Zeta Gundam. And besides that, I build Zaku's, Zigox, Gelgooks, all sorts of stuff. And uh, this one doesn't have much of a side, I mean front skirt or black back skirt armor, because of course of the shroud armor. But despite that, the legs... Uh, is that they will always st still will stay like in this kind of uh, split form now uh, I guess because the connection here and this was uh, one thing about this kit is that it was really stiff and sturdy so uh, 
there might be parts that could be difficult for you to put in as well because some parts were really pain now as you can see there's this connection here and that connection is really strong despite the actual peg is really short and the leg itself there's not much room for it to stay in so uh, it doesn't have much uh, uh, space for it to do a you know a vertical stand so this is as far as you get the knee part, uh, one really, I, I believe they really did a good detail on it. So this is this just the normal usual leg you'll see, but when you bend the knee or leg, uh, this is not actually a part falling off. It's actually meant to do that. It has these, uh, I wouldn't say piston actions, but still it looks like there's some mechanics actually going on here. In terms of mobility or articularity, that's a, that's a full. That's as far as you go. And the feet. Well, uh, one thing I haven't seen these kind of feet in a long time. Where usually, if you build the leg, and then there should be a peg here, and then connects to the feet right away. Unlike those, you build the leg and the feet separately, and there's a, another separate feet that connects. The two parts so that's one uh, th small part I haven't seen for a while so in terms of balance as you can see it, it's not really having much problems unless you manage the if you, unless you do some weird stuff with the ankles and also the the skirt armor or skirt part actually has this swivel system so you can actually change positions of the leg of the actual leg so you can go a little bit more forward or back I believe I put this on the main backside the main reason is that I was trying to adjust it but it was just too stiff I even barely managed to make go back all the way back so there's no way I'm going to actually uh, move this part around because I'm afraid uh, I don't want anything snapping or breaking so yeah and also these are one of those Gundams that might actually have parts that might snap or easy to break like I just had the beam rifle front part because it's really really uh, weak to be honest it's one of those frail parts like the antennas of GM's or and those kind of stuff so yeah now we got the upper part of the body as I said, these are all stiff. Even for me getting the head on to the kid was really difficult. You don't really have much stuff to talk about. The head, those are the green parts are stickers now. I believe the Blitz and Buster, they, I heard that they have clear parts for that. I mean the clear plastic, same color. So basically the Blitz have, has blue clear parts. Well, this one's just a sticker. And let's see. The arms. We got a quite a big bulky shoulder armor. Now you can see it. It, it does look similar to the Strike Gundam's uh, shoulder, except for the the blue part. But as you can see, well, every Gundam was all all the four Gundams besides the Aegis was based on the dual Gundam. So that's one thing we can expect now. This this part can actually move a bit. And. In terms of articulation of the arms, I think I should show this part actually, that would be better. It, now, it, this is really stiff, so this, this could be kind of tricky for me. This is uh, as far as you go. Now, uh, because of those big bulky shoulder armors, there might be some times where the shoulder armor and the beam saver here might actually you know collide to each other so that might happen sometimes but no big deal I can take care of that and I barely use the beam savers and you got these holes for the shield so let me just get that back I really hope I don't break anything else because I, I, that would make me really sad because this is one of my favorite kits now uh, and as you can see, these top parts, these parts were as these open opening ability. I'm not sure why, but I I haven't built a strike on them yet, so maybe there is a reason for that. For like maybe launcher strike, sword strike, and yeah, I'm gonna assume that's something for those. But uh, for the dual, you mostly need them closed, so nothing too major. And I believe the shoulder parts were also one of those parts that gave me really hard times. Uh, because these can actually 
move but really stiff so you might need to take some effort i'm not going to show that off because it's not really much of a big deal for me now the back part uh, you got these thrusters and each thruster moves individually as i said these are really stiff parts so they won't move that easily i'm not sure if it's just mine but mine was really stiff and i was actually kind of afraid i might snap something but luckily i, I wasn't of course these parts move kind of a bit easier but still i'm putting a lot of effort to move these so you can move them anytime you want and the beam savers are uh, the typical gundam style uh, they can just pop off now some one beam saber is, is stiff and one is actually kind of less stiff i'm not sure i don't know why but that tends to happen and you can move the beam saber's position just like that but when you put this in they also make a, some sort of clicking noise so that's an indicator if it's fully inside and now the weapons as i said beam saber no big deal and now we have the bazooka i'm gonna try putting the bazooka in here now how the hand works is that you get a trigger finger for the right hand and then in all in all the gun types or blasters they all have these holes in it you just push the pick inside that hole which sometimes could be a bother but not as too bothersome considering and you get the you get the hand i prefer doing this uh detaching the hand first and of course you line up the uh, the fingers of course now just give me a moment it's kind of difficult to do it in front of camera I did this with the right hand, but I'm not, well, and this kind of be difficult with the left hand because this was the one that had the beam rifle on it. Okay, we somehow got it in the hand. And then. Now. As most Gundams, holding a bazooka isn't that easy, so I'm going to assume there's only a, like certain poses that that are available. Now I somehow got got it, but it still looks awkward. If well, if you're looking from the side, it's not too bad, but if you're looking in front, uh, yeah, there, somehow the it doesn't really match up with the shoulder and it's kind of wobbly at the moment the only incident where I was able to manage the bazooka was only the hakushiki until because most Gundams they put on the shoulder the hakushiki actually goes into the uh, this part so so yeah uh, I really love this bazooka now if originally if the <laughs> beam rifle didn't snap i was about to actually got by a blitz gundam and then give this bazooka to the blitz gundam because he doesn't have really much accessories but well since the beam rifle snapped i'm having second thoughts now so yeah uh that's basically it for the kit itself now we're going now let's get into the assault trial mode come on oh, okay gave me a, quite a scare now now, when playing the assault trial mode, it's kind of recommended that you take the hands off because it's. Don't worry, that didn't break. It's just popped up. Because uh, when you put a certain piece of armor, it's not going to be easy with the hands on. So, and the hands are also really stiff. If you want, you can take off the head as well but I'm gonna try while doing this because taking the head off and on is kinda tricky so I guess for starters we should start with the chest I assume now the chest um, not too well, complicated you can open up the chest so you can actually manage to open the cockpit while the armor is on and that reminds me, I forgot to do the um, cockpit. Now, the cockpit also opens. 
just put that down and you have to slide this out and open it and there you go the cockpit opens no big deal and somehow every time I do this I feel like I'm doing it wrong and I think I did it right this time so uh, putting on the assault shower armor isn't that tough they actually just slide in so all you gotta do is just put okay that's my first time incident of that happening okay you put the chest armor first well for me that's what i usually do and then to make it stable you got these other armor parts you just put it on the shoulder I hope I really don't break the V fins on the Gundam because that would really suck. You know what? That does it. I'm gonna take off the head. Sorry, I'm being a bit nitpicky, but yeah, for the sake of me buying this with my actual allowance, yeah, I'd rather keep them safe. Okay, that's done with the chest armor, and let's see, I guess we should go with the shoulder armor next. Now, we got two shoulder armors, one has the rail gun, one has a missile pod, so here's the one with the missile pod. It's kind of really stiff to open this part. I, I was able to do it a few times, but, okay, there we go. So you, got, you have five missiles in here, separate piece, basically, and this green section part is actually a sticker. And I don't really paint Gundams, so uh, I usually go for the stickers. Now what you do is, there's these small pegs here. You go through the hole in this part of the shoulder. Now while I was also building this, I was almost afraid if I might have snapped the shoulder parts. Because the shoulder part, there was this part where it was too stiff for me to actually put it in. And I put a little string and there were some stress marks on the Gundam itself. Okay, we got that shoulder side open. And this one, the other shoulder could be tricky, well, not tr tricky tricky, but uh, stiff tricky. Well, you do the same thing, basically. And that was easy, but this part, this is the rail gun. You can separate this rail gun, and as you can see, there's a handle there, and you can attach to the hand. And well, I don't want to do that, but I recommend you you uh, push back the beam sabers just in case, and then you just attach it. Attaching is no problem. It's just how stiff it is. I, There are some spaces I need to push in more, but I don't want to give. I'm gonna detach it right away, so I don't want to have too much problem. So you got the two shoulder armors. The rail gun moves about anywhere you want. Uh, I guess we should go with the uh, arms now. For the arms, the reason I told you to get the the hands off is because. Well, this part doesn't really matter, but after you put this part, you have to put a black piece here, or gray, and you slide it in like that, and there you go. That's how it works. So I'm going to do it on the other side. Give me a moment. Well, 
Actually, let's go for the back section now. Now, we have these thrusters, and I believe those who've seen or watched uh, knows that they he also gets another additional thrusters. Now, uh, let's see. Now, there's these two pegs here. You just need to put it on these two holes. I'm not sure how that exactly works, but it works somehow. And then, this part was really kind of interesting for me because there's no, you don't really see any pegs here, but they just slide in. Like that, they just slide in like that, so. Uh, interesting way. And let's see, we'll go with the legs, and I'm gonna leave the most difficult part for last. Okay, there's the head. <laughs> okay, now you for the legs you get two pieces, uh, one that goes on the outer side. It's kind of tricky to line these up sometimes, so bear with me if you're not if I'm, I'm like being a total loser here. And then you got these pieces that just. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to put that first and then here. No wonder. They just snap onto each other. They don't really snap onto the Gundam itself, so it could feel a little bit wobbly sometimes. So say you do the same thing on the other side as well. As you can see, the shroud armor was built by Zaft. So they have a different feeling to each other. So yeah. And on the legs you got these thrusters that move like this, so well good detail. And now those who built or bought this now knows what I'm gonna do here. You can move the thrusters but not too much. They're all kind of they all they're all already kind of feeling a little bit loose here. I'm gonna have to resnap that again. And now you got these front and back skirt arm. The back skirt is no problem for me. They just snap in right away. Now how these works is that if you see this uh, skirt armor, they have these holes in it, and you gotta put these pegs into that hole. The back part is one piece, so there's no problem. What I realize is that these move separately, so you gotta match them exactly in order to make them less make them less pop out. So I'm gonna try that now. As you can see, there's no use of matching one side. You have to match them together. And I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm doing this right, so I'm just gonna check. If you don't, well, if you see, if you don't match them up, it's not gonna be easy. And somehow these side skirts are, I mean, the front skirts are being really stiff than usual. There, I think I got it. So yeah, but still, it's not really a stable connection, so if you touch it, it's gonna just fall off. And I'm not gonna attach the hands or, or the weapons because... Because, uh, with the shroud arm on, it's kind of difficult to put the bazooka on its hand because of the shoulder. And there we go, I forgot one small touch and it falls off. But anyway, without this front skirt, you can see how bulky this becomes. I'm pretty sure most of them who built these will understand why I, uh, I'm giving up on this or on sh armor itself. And without, even with the armor, you can still put the shield on the same position because there's these holes on the back of the armor, like, like, like this. So the same way of attaching it, 
as well, but it's still gonna feel awkward in a way. So yeah. Anyway, this was basically all the reviews I can do about this Gundam. Uh, I'm sorry I'm still in a bit shocked because I broke a beam rifle. First time actually breaking something on Master Grades, I'm still in a deep shock mode. Uh, I don't really paint my Gundam, so you might have seen a lot of bad nubs here. So I hope you understand that. But those who are actually trying to buy this Gundam, I would definitely recommend it. If you're one of those people like me who doesn't really like too much extra stuff, well, then I wouldn't really much recommend this. But still, if you love the Gundam itself, it's worth buying. Uh, it's big and bulky, and those who like big and bulky Gundams, I would definitely recommend this. And excellent weapons, especially the bazooka. So, yeah. Uh, this was my first seed kit and it turned out very well except for the beam rifle hope you enjoyed watching this review and hope this was helpful uh, I'm gonna get another master grade this time this, this is gonna be my first uh, P Bandai uh, exclusive release a master grade the GM cannon I'm gonna get it this Wednesday so hope you're looking forward to it and hope this was informative and Hope we hope I can see you guys again. Thank you for watching my video and and have a nice day.